Again, what are we talking about? If your eyes cause you to sin, would you resist, stop, or continue? First Corinthians six verse ten this time. No nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Remember what we have in verse 9. It says, be not deceived. Be not, de uh, be not, de don't be deceived. All those who practice these things, and sometimes we say, oh, well, I don't, I'm not involved with all these things. That's fine. But there may be something else that we do which needs to be repented of because those who practice these things you know, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is not maybe, it is, it's, it's a definite. But God is saying, verse 11, and such were some of you. Which means that even though we came to God as sinners, we were sinners from the beginning and we, we've already been born in sin. That's already known, you know, according to King David. You know. And so we know that this is so. But the question is that, after we have surrendered our life to become Christians, what do we do from there? Do we go back to the old sin? Do we go back to the flesh? And God says we have to be separate. So verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but you were washed when you became a Christian. But ye are sanctified when you surrendered your life. To Christ, then the Holy Spirit came into you and cleaned you out. But ye are justified, which is to say that now no, God looks at you just as if you had not sinned. That's the meaning of justification. Just as if you had not sinned. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. So that is also something to consider. Question 9. If God commands Christian women to exhibit the hidden person of the heart and not to dress up with fake hair attachments, painted eyebrows, and large eyes, red lips or purple lips, but... They continue and say, oh, I'm a Christian. I have to dress and let people know uh, that I'm this. What does uh, 1 Peter 3, 3 to 6 say? You know, it is there. It's not that it's uh, something new that we are saying. But as for us, what are we? We are the watchmen. We, are the, we, we just blow the trumpet, as God has said. You know, we blow the trumpet, and whether uh, it is the first time or the... It's been blown long, long, long time ago. It was uh, said in the time of uh, Prophet uh, Jeremiah and Prophet uh, Hezekiah. They made the announcement. They actually said it. And also Prophet Isaiah. So these are not new. And so uh, it's just that we are being encouraged to be peculiar, you know, Christian women don't want to be peculiar nowadays. They don't want to be the hidden. They want to expose themselves like uh, as women, as the uh, people. They want to go on Facebook and, and show and let, let me see that. This is her, and do this post and do that post. Why? Are we not selling ourselves? Are we not advertising ourselves as prostitutes? Someone will say, oh, no, I'm just uh, posting uh, to let people know my, my, my latest picture. Why? May God help us. First Peter 3, 3 to 6. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. You know, I'm not saying it's been said a long time ago. And of wearing of gold or of putting 
on of apparel, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear anything. But it's, God knows why he put it there. It's because, you know, there's a tendency to say, oh, well, let me dress a little bit more. Let me add a little bit more. Let me show off a little bit more. Let me show off a little bit of my body. Let them know. That's what they do in Hollywood. Verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great praise. Well, prize. Uh, God, uh, God takes it as a, as a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, a, a very noble, it's, it's very quality, it's, you know, when we do that, yes. You can say great, but it's, it's, God enjoys it, God likes it. When the meek and quiet spirit, mm, it is in the sight of God, no. It is acceptable, it is to be applauded. For verse 5 says, for after this manner, which means these are the things that in the old time, you know, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. We're not even going to go there. That's a different topic. Uh, verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Amen. And then we go to question 10. If God wants women not to follow the evil practices of prostitutes in ancient days by painting their faces, eyes, lips, but they ignore it, but end up in the hellfire. Some will say, oh, no, no, this, this is not uh, something. But Jeremiah has it. Jeremiah 430. And when he says, enlarge your eyes. How do you enlarge your eyes? It's like when you color something and you highlight it, what does that become? It becomes uh, enlarged. Jeremiah 4.30 says, And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. We see the reference uh, from P uh, Peter, and now we see uh, the prophet Jeremiah saying it. Though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life because one has uh, ignored it. Then I will jump quickly to the, uh, Ezekiel, which is, well, let, let me go to, the, uh, go to it and I will. Question 11, if God wants women not to adorn themselves with high heels, earrings, chains, bracelets, but they excuse themselves because they want to look good, but end up in the hellfire. We remember that when Jacob and his children were leaving uh, the father-in-law, going back, leaving Padam Aran, and they were getting close, what did he say? Didn't he ask all the children, bring all your ear and bring all your this thing, and let's bury them. And, and he took all of them, collected them, and buried them, you know, because he wanted to purify them, to cleanse them. But we've taken the old, uh, you know, the old habit, and we want it. So Ezekiel says, Ezekiel 23, 40. Says, and furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far unto them, unto whom a messenger uh, was sent. And lo, they came for whom thou didst wash thyself, paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. You know, how do you paint your eyes? The only way to do it is, is as we have said, when you add. 
and you see the newspaper uh, on, on TV, you see the women, their eyes, and with extra uh, eyelashes, and I wonder why. Are the eyelashes they have not good enough? Why do they have to extend it? Extend the hair, extend the eye, extend uh, everything. All as advertisement. But where, where did this come from? Is this something that was regular with the Israelites? No. It is the practices of the old, of uh, the people. And who uh, did that? It is done to entice. It is done in such a way as to make uh, the people, anybody who look at it, to say, oh, well, uh, this is, it is, in short, it is called prostitution. And whatever name we give, uh, we make excuse for it. Well, we can say whatever we want to say, but God has, uh, you know, has said, don't. And this lady, you know, she was also trying to entice. It's a way to entice. Second Kings 9.30. And following says, And when Jehu, who was coming to sort of, uh, you know, take charge and control and remove every, all those immorality, all the sin, killing everybody who was uh, corrupt. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And what did she do? She painted her face and tied her hair, her head, and looked out at the window. What, what was the purpose of that? So that when Jehu entered the place, and Jehu would look at us, oh, then Jehu would be paralyzed. And whatever Jehu wanted to do, Jehu would not do it because, oh, uh, the, the lady, she's made herself beautiful. And so, and then he would lose. Verse 31 says, and as Jehu entered in at the gate, and she, Je uh, Jezebel said, had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? It was a reference to, uh, you know, uh, Zimri who killed, uh, well, that's a different, who killed his, uh, you know, his, uh, the king before, the master, and then took over. And, and then he also ended up, uh, you know, dead. So we can see that. And then I'm not going to read it, but uh, the next one is uh, Isaiah. But I'll just say a little bit of it so that we can see that all these references are not uh, just ordinary references. They are really something, uh, well, and, you know, we shouldn't say that, oh, it's the women. It's, it's, it's both the men and the women. You know, as we read earlier, if, uh, you know, there is bad thing and uh, the man is encouraging it and the woman is doing it, it's both. And uh, in God's... Uh, question here, or warning here, in Isaiah 3, he says, moreover, verse 16, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling uh, with their feet. This is long time ago, a long time, you know, so we can see they were doing like, every time, they, you know, all these things and they were, uh, everything they were, it was, they were calling attention because one, they have all these uh, uh, things that they, they, they wore and so it was calling attention. God is saying, therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. This is the Israel, it's talking about against the Israelites, the women. And the Lord will discover their uh, secret parts. Okay, uh, the Lord, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. 18. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their curls and their round tires like the moon. The, uh, 19. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, uh, uh, 20, the bonnets and the uh, ornaments of the legs, and uh, they even had everything on their legs too, you know, 
maybe like the Indians. And the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, 22. The rings, and the nose jewels, 22. The changeable uh, suits of apparel, and the uh, mantles, and the uh, wimples, and the crisping uh, pins. So all of this up to verse uh, 24. Question 12. If we believe that God promises to send all liars to the lake of fire, why do we continue to lie? God has said, this thing that you are doing, you know, if your eye, if your right hand, if whatever part of it, you know, again, if, you are, if uh, our eyes cause us, cause us to sin, would we continue to do it or stop? So the question now is that if God has made that provision that you know, the whole idea, let me quickly also say that God says something that is important to you. If that important thing will cause you to sin, will you continue and go to the lake of fire? Or will you say that, oh, this thing I love, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, to, to remove it, it will be a hindrance. And I know, you know, there has been cases where somebody important in the church, they've done something, and everybody says, oh, you know, let it go. It's all right, it's all right. And we are encouraging sin. Should we encourage sin and end up in the lake of fire? What did the Apostle Paul say? The woman, uh, sorry, the man who was fornicating in the house, his father's house, what did the Apostle Paul say? He said, point him out. Let's communicate him from the church. But what do we do? Oh, no, we don't want to just communicate to anybody. Uh, this person is a leader. This person is a pastor. If he has communicated him, uh, uh, there will not be another person uh, to do it. There will not be, you know, this person has caused something in, in, the, in the church, sin. And we are just doing it, uh, oh, gentle and all that. This person, you know has issues, and nobody is willing to do anything because, you know, or, or we postpone it. Oh, let's, let's maybe, we, let's talk about it in 20, 2020. Why? And many people have died in sin. Instead of confessing, they knew what they had done, but... You know, instead of conf instead of going to the person, oh, I'm sorry what I did, they rather die. Instead of going to the person, oh, I'm sorry, they say, oh, Lord, please forgive me this thing that I did, and you know. And I think uh, some months ago I mentioned about someone also who also yeah. deceived, deceived some ministers. This I know personally. It's not, uh, you know, it, it, I know personally because I was informed. And. The person didn't, and unfortunately. So let us consider these things and consider and try to say what can we, you know, upgrade? What can we do better in our Christian life?